This pre-calc 12 lesson is on invariant points. Invariant points help you plot a new function when you're given a graph of a function rather than just an algebraic function. Uh, also, sometimes it's easier to plot the new function when you plot the given function first. Invariant points differ for each new function, so you need to be able to calculate these invariant points yourself. So formally, if we're given y is equal to f of x and y is equal to g of f of x, we want where f of x equals g of f of x. So these are where the two curves meet. Now, we normally want to substitute we substitute the y is equal to f of x into here and into here. So this looks simpler. Here we have an example where g of x is equal to the square root of x. This is a pre-calc 12 function that you need to know. The domain is x is greater than or equal to 0, and uh, the range is y is greater than or equal to 0. So we start off with y is equal to the square root of y. We square both sides. We move everything to one side. And we factor. So we have invariant points where y is equal to 0 or 1. So these are where our invariant points occur. Before we plot, let's take a note. The square root of a quarter is a half. So y is less than the square root of y when y is between 0 and 1. When we take the square root of 4, it's equal to 2. So this means y is greater than the square root of y when y is greater than 1. Okay, so let's look at the function that we're given. And again, this is a graphical function. It's not an algebraic function. And it's important that you know how to graph g of f of x without an algebraic function. Okay, so we have our invariant points lying on zero, y is equal to zero, and y is equal to one. So I've labeled those all in blue, and we'll just work our way from left to right. We know that g of f of x is below f of x when it's greater than one, and then it becomes greater than f of x below one. And we don't plot anything down here because the don't uh, <clears throat> the domain of the square root is greater than zero. And again, we start at zero. We plot above, and then when we reach one, we plot below. And we do the same thing all the way along. Now when this point endpoint is included, we make sure that the endpoint is included on our g of f of x. Again, plot above. When we hit 1, plot below. And above. And that completes this graph. In pre-calc 12, we also learn about the cube root function. The domain of the cube root function is all reals, and the range is all reals. Let's start with our substitution. y is equal to the cube root of y. We cube both sides. y cubed equals y. We move everything over to one side. And we factor out a y. 
and we factor our difference of squares. So this tells us our invariant points occur where y is equal to negative 1, 0, and 1. Just like square root, uh, cube root has a similar property. If we take the cube root of negative 1 eighth, that equals negative a half. So, the absolute value of y is less than the absolute value of the cube root of y when y, the absolute value of y is between 0 and 1. The cube root of 8 is equal to 2. So, the absolute value of y is greater than the absolute value of the cube root of y when the absolute value of y is greater than 1. We're plotting the same function, except now we have uh, y is equal to negative 1 is where the invariant points occur. So now we plot. We know it's below f of x, above 1, and above f of x. And to picture this, you can just flip the whole graph upside down. So now we're plotting above and below if you're looking at it upside down. And then turn it back and we're plotting above and below. Above and we're above when we flip it. And we're above when we flip it back. And the endpoint is included, so we put a solid dot there. Here the endpoint is not included, so let's put an open dot. And we're below above 1, and above when we're below 1, or negative 1 in this case. And we continue along. Okay, and that graph is complete. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but we can look for invariant points with pretty much any function. Here we have g of x is equal to sine x, and we have an invariant point at 0, because 0 is equal to sine 0, sine 0 is just 0. So our invariant points occur where y is equal to 0. You need to know calculus to know why the invariant points only occur at y is equal to 0. But I'll give you a brief explanation. The slope of y is just 1. The slope of sine y is equal to cos y. Cos y is always less than 1 when it's not 0. Okay, therefore the curves do not cross. So here we have f of x. f of x is just equal to x. And here we have sine y. So sine of f of x, which is just sine x, looks like that. And you can see that x is always above sine x. And similarly on the reflection. And this concludes the lesson on invariant points.